We have a former dean, College of um, Plant Science and Crop Production, Professor Muftal Ataishi. Can you give me a round of applause, please? We still have some two empty seats, please. The director of veterinary teaching of FITU of this great citadel of learning, Professor Lufemi Ojo. Can you give him a round of applause, please? Sir, can you please move? Let's close up the seats, please. We have uh, uh, the former Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, Professor Abini Olayaju. Can we give him a round of applause? Also, uh, also is the Director of Community Based Farming Scheme, Professor Sunday Adigbo. We have um, here with us this morning the representative of the Director of Institute of Human Resources. 
Dr. Dari, Dari Akirele. Can we give him a round of applause, please? I would like to recognize the presence of all heads of um, units here present, heads of the department here present. I recognize you all. In a couple of minutes, the Consul General to Nigeria, His Excellency, Mr. World Bonner, has just, I've just um, reliably gathered that he will be entering this um, red um, chamber.
have innovation in everything that we do. Uh, all this we intend to put into uh, understanding the fact that uh, service to humanity is at the peak of it, and these are what we commit ourselves to doing. What drives us as a university? Entrepreneurship skill and drive, uh, quality of our product, our process, uh, the policies that we have uh, developed, uh, the processes that we go through, as well as the impact that we want to make. These are the things that drives us as a university. There are several opportunities here. In fact, I have stated several. This is where opportunity is in agriculture. Uh, our products, you have seen some of them. Our students, they are our ambassadors, they speak for us. Uh, government supporting policies is also part of the opportunities that we have. Uh, goodwill within the country, our university has goodwill within the country. And we also have reputation within the West African sub-region. Of course, I have stated before that we have 10 colleges. Uh, these are the various colleges that we have highlighted here. And uh, the, the Victoria uh, pictures for the various colleges is also uh, being presented. His Excellency, you agree with me, these are architectural masterpiece. Okay, like I said, we have a, um, different institutes and centers, academic and non-academic centers. Some of them are listed, are listed here. Our farms are also producing a lot of um, products. Um, we have breeds of chicken, um, other pro uh, turkeys, um, guinea fowl, and all that. Of course, we also pride ourselves in having this set of goats uh, in our university. This is the Kalahari red goats. They are very meaty, very big, okay? And um, at a point, these this, this, uh, goats were receiving more visitors than the vice chancellor. <laughs> of course, we also have a lot of plantation. Uh, the, the plantain plantation, the oil palm plantation, we have the soybean um, plantation, we have the uh, plantain and various other crops. Of course, we also have some horticultural crops, uh, um, vegetables, both exotic and local vegetables. Uh, we have a um, farm that where we essentially uh, plant maize, several acreage of uh, of maize plantation. Um, the other aspect of where His Excellency may not be able to get to the student hostel, the computer lab. We have a very good computer lab. Um, the health center and all that. Of course, the Vice Chancellor had uh, told us here that we have uh, a seven billion uh, liter capacity dam and this dam um, we, we are thinking in the nearest future that we can harness this facility for hydroelectric uh, power generation for our university and for the uh, immediate environment. His Excellency, we want to present these very special areas of potential collaboration to you, sir. Uh, it is our intention to promote knowledge it is our intention to get technology transfer, of course, capacity building and skill development within the agriculture and the sciences that we, uh, we have in our university. It is our intention to develop more. Uh, of course, we have interest in research, technology transfer, value chain enhancement for the primary product, as well as uh, market access. We, we uh, these are potential areas that we are looking at. We are also looking at um, research training and extension program, and of course, we are looking at investment opportunities in FUNAB. All these areas uh, of um, 
uh, potential collaboration fall within our core mandate as a university. And uh, it is our intention to always support human capital development as well as foster innovation. His Excellency, Mr. Vice Chancellor, we do hope that this meeting will enable us to further okay, foster uh, international collaboration between uh, FUNAB and the people and government of Germany. And uh, I want to say without any iota of doubt that the best opportunities in agriculture are here. And we are very much open to innovative collaboration. <laughs> His Excellency, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want to declare, sir, that we value immensely your visit to our university, the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta. This day, we do hope that uh, as we proceed, that we'll begin to reap the fruits of your visit here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director Cadiz. Professor Adibo Ifafiolu is an expert in monographic animal nutrition. Please let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Your Excellency, you can't expect anything less than uh, the stuff we are made of in funeral. Please let's give him a round of applause once again. It was an excellent um, presentation. Thank you. At this juncture, may I respectfully invite our own arm, Champlain, and the university orator, the immediate past deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor Christian Ikeobi, to please give the German Consul General's citation to us. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Agriculture, Birkuta, Professor Olushola Babatunde Kende. With your kind permission, sir, I would like to present the citation on the Consul General of the German Consulate General, Lagos, Nigeria, Mr. Wert Bonner. May I humbly request that the Consul General, Your Excellency, please stand and kindly remain standing. <laughs> His Excellency, the Consul General of the German Consulate General, Lagos, Nigeria, Mr. White Bonner, was born in Bonn. Germany in 1963 and is happily married to his amiable wife, Dr. M.K. Bonner, and they have two adult children. <laughs> Mr. White Bonner was res reserve officer of the German Federal Armed Forces from 1982 to 1984. He studied geography and law between 1984 and 1989 in Tübingen and Bonn, Germany, and qualified as a lawyer. In 1991, he obtained the Master of Laws, LLM, degree in International Environmental Law from the American University, Washington, D.C., United States of America. He was a Fulbright Scholar in the university 
during the Master of Laws degree program. In 1993, Mr. White Bonner worked with the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, at their headquarters in Nairobi, Kenya, serving in the legal, depart legal department for several years. He joined the German Foreign Service in 1995 and worked in the headquarters of the German Foreign Service in Bonn and also in the personal division in Berlin from 1996 to 2004. In 1998, he served at the German Embassy Pretoria, South Africa and in 2004, from 2004 to 2007, he also served at the German Embassy, New Delhi, India. Mr. Wed Bonner also served in 2011 as the Deputy Head of Division for Climate and Environmental Foreign Policy in the Foreign Office of the German Foreign Office in Berlin, Germany. In 2013, he was at the head of division, he was the head of division for German personnel in international organizations for the Foreign Office in Berlin. And in 2016, he was deputy head of mission and head of economic section, German Embassy Seoul, South Korea. And in 2019, he was the deputy head of mission and head of economic section, German Embassy, Hanoi, Vietnam. Since 2022, Mr. Wade Bonner has been serving as the German Consul General for the Consulate General of Germany in Lagos, Nigeria. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, Mr. Wade Bonner, His Excellency the Consul General of Germany, is here in FUNAP to present the public lecture titled Nigerian German Cooperation Improving Food Security Through Sustainable Environment. And it is my pleasure to humbly invite him to present this lecture. Thank you, sir. A warm welcome to all of you, although it should be the other way around. You welcomed us so warmly, so <laughs> good morning to everybody. Um, Honorable Vice-Chancellor Professor Ulushula Kehinde, dear Vice-Chancellors, uh, uh, Deputy Chancellors, dear faculty members, dear students, young students and very young students at the other end, It was really a wonderful welcome on your campus this morning and my wife and I, we are very happy to be spending two days in Abiyokuta. We arrived on Wednesday afternoon. We had a wonderful meeting with somebody you all know on Wednesday evening, Professor Wole Shoyinka. So best regards from him to you at FUNAP. He told me I should tell you this. And then yesterday, there were official meetings in the morning uh, with the government of Ogun State, Governor Abiyodun, and some of his cabinet members, some of his commissioners. And in the afternoon, we had a chance to see something outside of offices. Uh, the, what's the market again? The, uh, 
Yeah, but the market. Uh, equal, equal, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm mixing up the names with the Lagos markets. That's <laughs> and and also to the uh, Presidential Museum and Library over Sanjo complex. So um, now we are very happy to be here. And one special thank you to Mr. Johnson Uluke Hinde, who was so kind to prepare everything so well. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I, I knew this before coming here, that you had this wonderful Times Higher Education ranking, number one in Africa, number seven globally. But then I asked myself, why do you ask for my support? You don't need it. <laughs> so, so I could stop here and go, but don't worry, I will stay. And, and you, now I also realize when I'm back to Lagos, where, where we are living, and some of these typical Lagosians tells me, well, we are the center of excellence, I will tell him, oh, you're making a geographical mistake, it's 100 kilometer north. Now, I'm not an agricultural scientist, I have to admit. I'm a lawyer who specialized first in international environmental law and was a kind of environmental activist also and working in Nairobi, etc. But then I joined the German Foreign Service, which is a kind of generalist job in political administration. You, know, you are a civil servant, but you are in a political field, working in a political field. So therefore, um, I have a kind of two-chapter two approach in, in my lecture. So the first part is a kind of general political part with some observations from my side as Consul General in Lagos. And then the second half, I want to focus on some practical examples of Nigerian-German cooperation. Of course, always under the heading of, um, of food security and uh, sustainable agriculture. So let me start, actually, with an African voice, even a Nigerian voice. Sorry, it's small print. I'm still 29, but I have to wear my glasses for this. Um, I guess you all know Dr. Akinwumi Adesina, right? I mean, he was the agricultural minister of Nigeria from 2011 and 2000, until 2015. And then he was nominated for being the president of the African Development Bank. And he definitely is one of our best partners, you know, in Africa, also from a European perspective. And last week, he spent some time in Lagos and gave a lecture there. And I think it's really interesting to, to follow what he's saying, because he, he told the, the, the Lagosians and the other Nigerians, well, for him, there are five key areas how to get Nigeria, so to say, back on track in a, in a modern and, and prospering way. And he said, sorry, he said um, the areas are fiscal accountability, education, housing, health coverage, and then food security. Yeah, so with this, with food security, he was back to his old terrain. And then just another quote of him, I think that is really important for all of us. He said, at the heart of transforming rural economies is agriculture, the main source of livelihoods. When agriculture moves away from being a way of life to a business, everything changes. Higher incomes and wages from agribusinesses will support education and health and spur even greater job creation for millions of youths, quote end. So I think this is really an important approach. And if we look at old industrialized countries like Germany, you know, many decades ago, we also had an had a agrarian population. But then this population got more and more into business, also first with agriculture, and then only later with steel and coal and whatever, heavy industries. So. There has to be this kind of move, this transition from subsistence agriculture to an agricultural business that is bringing many, many millions of people up. 
And um, of course, agriculture is not an isolated system, meaning, just to, to, to talk about some observations of myself in Nigeria, you have to have security. I mean, you are all maybe better away even than I am. When there is unrest, when there is violence, also in rural areas, like in some parts of Nigeria, of course, it's a problem to improve agriculture. And many farmers are not on their fields. So this is, of course, an issue, not, not, not something that FUNAB can solve. But it's an issue for all of you and all of us in Nigeria. Then, of course, there is the infrastructure issue. We were discussing, the Vice Chancellor and I, how do we get the federal government to improve the Alabata Road, right? Because uh, you, you have a good road on campus, and in, when we came from Lagos to Abiyakuta, the road was well as, as well. But what about this stretch that people can reach you easier and, and quicker and better? And then, of course, we have the issue of climate change all over the world, that we have to be as fast as possible to adapt to changing weather conditions, to react to extreme weather events, etc. And of course, we have, so to say, homemade issues like inflation. I mean, when food prices are going up quickly, there is an issue also for the largest part of the population. So, um, Germany was, you, you may know Germany is one of the so-called G7 nations, you know, the group of seven that are the, the old, kind of old Western or Northern industrialized nations, the biggest economies of the world so far. And um, they, they formed a couple of years ago under German leadership when we had the G7 presidency, a so-called Global Alliance for Food Security. And there is a two-pronged two, uh, approach because on the one hand, there are crises, of course, I mean, there have been food crises in Europe also in, in history a lot, and there are food crises somewhere in Africa, be it by war or be it by uh, natural disaster, what, whatever the cause is. So, of course, Germany has been involved with, together with the by, uh, United Nations and the European Union, but also bilaterally, in humanitarian relief, you know, with, with helping with food, uh, food supplies from outside. But that's, of course, also something that helps in a, in a concrete crisis. It's n not at all any solution for, for the, the most important issues of development and prosperity. So the Global Alliance for Food Security is not just looking at what the World Food Program, so to say, what the United Nations are doing and where we can help with funds and material, etc. But it's mainly about to build up together with the other continents, with African countries, resilient systems of agriculture in the long term so that the, the African countries like Nigeria uh, have their independent agricultural system and, and there is import but also export. You know, that it's a two-way side because there are many products that only grow in tropical countries and we are interested in them but there are other products that grow in other areas of the world. So there should be some import but of, from Nigerian perspective, but of course also a lot of export and of course, first of all, feeding your own nation in, in a good way. Uh, just to give you one example, that is, if you look at mineral fertilizers, right? I'm not talking about pesticides, all the poisonous things. I'm talking about mineral fertilizers that we all need. The average uh, quantity per hectare that is used in sub saharan Africa is only 22 kilos, according to international statistics. The global average is 135 kilos. So that's a huge difference to the, to the detriment, to the disadvantage of African countries. So that, for example, is one thing we are, we are focusing on in this Global Alliance for Food Security, that we have all together in joint cooperation, we have to improve the fertilizer production, but also get it to where it's needed, so that good fertilizers are produced in Africa and used in Africa. And you may know that, meanwhile, there are good methods, partly developed by Germany, 
that you produce so-called green nitrogen fertilizer, meaning you don't use fossil fuels, oil or gas, to produce fertilizers in high quantities, but you use renewables, solar or wind energy or biomass energy, to produce so-called green nitrogen fertilizers. And when you mix them with organic fertilizers and also add some education and training to those farmers who have to use it, you will have a big, big development, a big jump in, in production. Um, doesn't matter which country and, and which soil, but it will help a lot. So this is just one example we have been focusing on uh, recently. Now, um, let me come to the second part, more concrete, on Nigerian-German uh, cooperation. Well, food security and sustainable agriculture are definitely one of the, the topmost priorities of our current government in Germany. And as you already heard, uh, Federal Chancellor, our head of government, Federal Chancellor Olaf Scholz, he decided to visit Nigeria as soon as it was possible after your last elections. And he came to, Lag to Abuja and Lagos in October 2023. Actually, President Tinubu made his first presidential visit to Germany in November 2023, so only a month later. And the two uh, senior politicians had two other meetings on international, personal meetings on international fora. And they now are on good terms also on the phone, you know, when, even when high-ranking professional p politicians don't know each other very well, it's difficult to, to agree on something on the phone or to dis really discuss something on the phone. But this is now a, a good working relationship between Chancellor Scholz and President Tinubu. So this was a very good start with your new government in, Ab in Abuja. And um, you can see that we are having this focus on agribusiness cooperation also by, by hosting us, I mean, the German government and our agriculture minister, Cem Özdemir, he hosted a so-called Af German-African Agribusiness Forum in January this year in Berlin. And our, our business associations were part of it. So it, it was not just to discuss agricultural policies in general, but really to invite um, African ministers and companies and so on to really discuss agribusiness, how to cooperate better in, in improving the agricultural landscape. Uh, unfortunately, the agriculture minister of Nigeria couldn't make it to Berlin to this conference in January, but on one panel you had a representative from Nigeria, Mrs. Ebunu Luwa Ajobieve, and I'm sure you know her, right? Because she is a FUNAB alumni, am I right? So, congratulations. Actually, she was uh, presenting in Berlin the, uh, the um, Next Generation Agriculture Impact Network and was part of a very interesting discussion on, on improving agriculture, especially on the African continent. So, of course, I mean, you, you are covering a lot of the topics uh, that, that are part of this cooperation. And uh, if I look at what my government is doing, it's kind of, uh, there are three major areas. Um, we, are, we are trying to focus also in, bi in our bilateral relationship with Nigeria. One is um, to improve agricultural methods, technology, be innovative, get the right machinery or technology involved and make it a business. And I think this matter of agriculture methods and innovation, you also had it in the little theater play, right? That we were, we were, that was performed very nicely this morning because it shows you have to have some agricultural knowledge to, to improve. And there are many ways to, to progress in, in this uh, sense. This, the third big issue is to uh, foster rural development by improving the infrastructure in general, but especially the energy infrastructure. Yeah? How do you get more solar energy, for example, because the sun power is there. 
how do you, we get more solar energy involved in agriculture, for example? And the third big issue that is your work as well is the capacity building yeah, from, from vocational training to ac academic training. How do we get more young people knowledgeable how to improve agriculture in their own country? And just to come back maybe to, to the, the beginning where, you know, when you, when you take Germany and Nigeria, Germany is, a, is also a federal republic, so also our public universities, they like to compete, you know, amongst each others, and, and that's a good, healthy, healthy competition, I would argue. And, um, but it's also typical for Germany that we are an old industrialized nation. You know, our population average statistically is about 43 years. You can't imagine. In Nigeria, it's 19 or 20. So it's double the population age on average. And, and in our agriculture, I think only 2% of the German population today are working in agriculture. So that's a big, big difference. But still, there's a lot of... of forces we can join. And so I would like to give you a few concrete examples, I think, where we are partly already collaborating, because we're not starting at zero, but where we can improve and, uh, and uh, increase our bilateral relationship. <clears throat> so these, these concrete examples are, the first is everything around cassava, right? I mean, Ogun State is also a cassava country, so to say. Uh, partly, we are already cooperating in research. I know that German and Nigerian scientists are cooperating on cassava issues, you know, how to improve productivity, how to make cassava even more climate resilient, whatever is a scientific topic. But there are also concrete business corporations. For example, we have a, a medium-sized engineering company in Germany. It's called GEA, three capital letters, GEA. They have an office in Lagos, in Ikeja, with about 40 engineers, all 40 engineers are from Africa, no European to be seen. And they are working, for example, on machinery, on noodle production machinery that can work with cassava floor. Because usually, you know, in Europe, noodles are produced with wheat floor. But you have to use different machines. You can't take the same machines for wheat when you want to use cassava floor. So you have to adapt. But that's one of the big projects this company is having with Nigerian partners to find the best solution for mass production, uh, sustainable production of uh, noodles and other products with cassava floor. Then, to the, one more example on cassava. You, you will know this. Uh, meanwhile, we realized, both in, in Germany and in Nigeria, often the, the skins and all the outer layers of such fruits like cassava are not waste, you know. Traditionally, they were regarded as waste. Nowadays, we realize they can be used for many purposes. It could be animal fodder, it could be uh, for some, you know, you make fabrics out of it, or you, or you burn them for biomass energy. You can gain energy from them. So this is another project where Germans and Nigerians are already cooperating to make better use of the, the skin layers or other, other parts, you know, of the cassava and other, other tropical fruits that you don't use directly for human nutrition. Then, the second example I would like to mention is the, the use of solar energy. You may know that also in Europe we are working a lot on, on renewables, but using them also in agriculture, meaning when you have big barns, how can you have your machinery that is, you know, e-mobility on your farm. You have, you have solar modules, on, for example, on the roof of your big barns or warehouses, and even a tractor or a forklift on a farm can run on solar energy. So if you, if you do it correctly, you can be totally autark, right, for, for those uses on your farmland. We already have it in Nigeria for some warehouses of industrial companies or factories, that they are run, that the e, they are e forklifts and they are running 100% on solar energy yeah? no no fossil fuels involved no grid necessary so these are i think also very good examples that have to 
be developed further also for Nigerian purposes. And we, we launched in 2023, we launched something that was originally developed in Germany. It's a new solar cooling system. Yeah, we, have the, we have a university of Hohenheim, it's a small technical university, and their engineers developed a new solar cooling uh, appliance that is finally quite simple, but you had to really invent something new. It's innovative. Yeah? And they, they connected themselves with a, to a, a private company, a SME in Germany, to market it. And this private company went to Nigeria and to five other African countries to introduce it in the market. And about two years ago, they started actually with two Nigerian partners. One is the, the Nigerian uh, Stored Products Research Institute, you will know, in Spree. And the private company actually is a Nigerian startup called um, what's Eco Tutu, uh, ECO Tutu. Eco Tutu. It's, it's in Lagos, a, a startup. And they, they took over this originally German innovation and adapted it to Nigerian conditions. And were really, really successful and clever in doing it. So, so our German engineers really admired their work. And they, so now uh, we are marketing it. We launched it in Lagos last, I think, August or September. So now the two companies, the German company and the Nigerian company, are, are, are marketing this product. The, the main use shall be you know, for, for vegetables and fruits that can't stand the heat or can't stand long transport uh, in the heat, etc., that they can be better kept, that there is much less loss, and that in the big cities you have near the markets or on the markets, you have like containers or you know, rooms that are cooled down by solar energy. Yeah? And then, you, of course, you need some additional knowledge. So those two companies are also organizing the training because you cannot put cassava and pineapple in the same temperature, right? I mean, you have to know how to handle these things in a cooling container. So that's one of our best pro uh, projects currently, you know, to improve uh, this, this cooling with, with solar energy. Then I'd like to uh, mention another private business partnership or a private business initiative. We have a trading company from Hamburg, uh, from Germany, uh, working in, so in Lagos. The company's name is C, uh, capital C, Wörmann. They are a trading company, but they trade with very good uh, equipment, also, you know, small agricultural machinery, like the one man or one woman plug, you know, that is very energy efficient. You don't need a tractor for the smaller fields. It's just something you, you, go, you go with on the field, but it's very effective. And we, are already, um, we already tested them in Oyo State, on the countryside, a bit, bit, I think, north of Ibadan. And they are very successful. And they are, they are not too expensive for, for farmers, you know, individual farmers. And, and this company, C. Verman, uh, built up already one uh, maintenance and training center in somewhere in Oyo State, you know, so that Nigerian farmers get their own skills, their own knowledge about handling these machineries that they run well for a long time, etc. I think that's important business to business agricultural uh, cooperation as well. And then I would like also to mention. Well, of course, this is in Lagos, but still, I hope it's interesting to you, for you because you are not too far away. Our, our chamber, you know, the, the, the delegation or the delegate of German industry and commerce in Lagos, which we call chamber also in, in our terms, so, the, so to say the counterpart of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we have the capital letters AHK from the German abbreviation. They have an office in Lagos. And recently, they employed another expert for the agricultural business area alone. So there is a, a German expert called Sebastian Gläser who, who arrived recently. He worked in Ethiopia, so already in Africa before. And he, is, he shall be the matchmaker, you know, from our chamber also to get Nigerian companies together with German companies to improve agricultural technologies, agricultural production, and so on. In, 
in Nigeria and also improve the, the skills training wherever necessary. And then I'd like to mention finally the so-called German desk. Two or three years ago, my, my government sponsored a so-called German desk, which means under the roof of a Nigerian big business bank, in this case Axis Bank in Lagos, there's a German desk headed by a German banker who then tries to make the matchmaking for those farmers and agribusinesses, SMEs in Nigeria, that don't have the funds, that need some smaller credits, yeah, some smaller loans, and to get good conditions for them, either being backed by German financial institutions or by Nigerian institution, uh, banks and institutions. You know, when, when Access Bank says, yes, we want to have ownership in this Nigerian development, they would come up with, with an offer. Or otherwise, this, this man uh, we, we posted there would, would offer something from the German side. As, and this shall improve especially the SME situation, yeah? because often it's a matter of starting financing the start. And often it's, it's rather low, low amounts of Naira you need, but, but the farmer may not have it to, to pay himself. He may need a starting loan. Okay, so um, let me close with one big recommendation that is in time rather soon. Uh, actually, Germany and Nigeria also have been partners since quite some years in, in building up uh, modern trade fairs. And one of the most important trade fairs we regard uh, as being West African, Nigerian West African, is the so-called Agrofood Nigeria, which I think started 10 years ago, and it's a yearly annual trade fair in Lagos in the landmark center. And this year it will happen very soon from the 26th of March, so in, in less than two weeks, March 26 to March 28. And I can only recommend to you to visit this trade fair because it's really an interesting marketplace of innovative ideas and products, machinery and everything uh, around agriculture and food security. And uh, the special story is of this uh, um, trade fair that a German professional private trade fair company is organizing it. Uh, it's, it's Fair Trade GmbH from Heidelberg uh, in Germany. And they are very well connected to Lagos, to Nigeria. So they have their Nigerian partners. And under the roof of the Landmark Center this year, we will have pavilions with SMEs from Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, South Africa, China, and then also, of course, many Nigerian and West African companies representing themselves, having their booths there and, and connecting their ideas. So I can only recommend to you to visit the Agrofood Nigeria 2024 in Lagos in the Landmark Center. The opening will be on the 26th of March, at the official opening at 11 o'clock. Then we can meet again, because I will be definitely there. And then it's going on for another two days. So whenever you have a chance to visit, it's, it's really worthwhile to have a look at the Agrofood Nigeria 2024. So, thanks a lot. That was the official lecture from my side. Let, let me make one more remark to your wonderful welcome. Of course, my wife and I, we know the Nigerian anthem quite a bit, because we hear it quite often. But, of course, your FUNAB anthem is much, much better. And the... <laughs> And, and your, your joint choir was really impressive. And then I also have to tell you, of course I watched your faces, when the German anthem was playing, I saw even some lips moving. So I think, especially in this block, there are two or three ladies and gentlemen who know some German and, and who were singing with us, with the German side. Thank you very much for this and thanks a lot to you. Thank you very much. Please, can we give this um, 
His Excellency, a better round of applause, please. May we all be seated, please. Thank you very much. At this juncture, with the permission of the Vice Chancellor, we'll be taking now five questions or comments from uh, the audience. Five comments or questions. So we'll be taking one from this side, this side, this side, and that side. Emeritus Professor Ayokade Bambo, number one. Thank you, ma'am. Special privilege to be here with us. And like you have talked about the um, equipment, uh, you know, the problem we are having here, especially in our crops, in our livestock, we are still a hundred years behind anyway because we are not interested in developing our own. We rather import and import and import. But I want to say that with the crops, we need to have all those equipments on processing and value addition. Because the problem with Nigeria is we waste a lot of our food resources. Almost 50% of harvests will be lost before they get to the market. So getting processing equipment um, storage facilities, value addition, I think that would be a great uh, assistance to this university. We have the exchange here. And I want to say that we want to really, uh, with the Vice Chancellor here, I think we should mo emphasize more on the maize, which is a problem now, especially in the South. Cassava, um, rice, because we do grow rice here. And sometimes we have been growing soybean. So we need all those processing equipment and we need storage facilities for them. We have um, crop and uh, seed technology department. I think we have to emphasize more on our seed, seed technology, processing, storage, and so on and so forth. I want to really thank you and appreciate your presence here. We are really very grateful. Thank you so much. Maybe I can just react shortly. Um, thank you very much for your comment, Professor. Um, you know, the, one of the old pictures that are burned into my brain from Africa, actually Kenya, was that the two of us were driving ourselves somewhere on the countryside north of Nairobi, and in front of us was a truck transporting fish from Victoria Lake. But what we saw of the truck was, it was a cooling truck, of course, but the water was running and running and running, you know, it was melting, 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 all the ice inside, and I wondered whether the fish would land freshly in, on Nairobi markets, you know? And I was wondering all the ride, I couldn't get around, so... So, and this means we, I mean, that is a long time ago, and it, uh, we all know Kenya has improved a lot, so, it will not happen like this anymore. But there, there is this, I think, our joint effort has to be to reduce food waste because when it's produced, it should be used, it should be eaten by somebody and not, not be wasted. So I think this is really a, a matter, uh, an area we should concentrate our forces. And let me also add on the, on the rice issue, we just had the Dutch, our Netherlands partners in Lagos, introducing uh, a new also technology of, of making rice more nutritious, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, growing. And the other issue with rice is, you may know traditional rice fields, like we know especially from Eastern Asia, you know, in Vietnam, they, they produce, unfortunately, they produce just by being there and growing, they produce a lot of methane, one of the climate gases that we want to get rid of. So, and there also are already some innovative ideas, not just ideas, they are, they are tested already how to reduce methane emissions from rice production. And this is also something that will be discussed, I'm sure, at least in the, in the Netherlands pavilion at the Agrofood in 10 days from now, because they introduced this, these rice issues also for, for Nigeria. Thank you.
these are our roads. In 2017, the World Bank team came here twice, and I submitted a proposal for this university for livestock and um, some processing. In any case, the, the, the leader of the team, when I submitted, said, Madam, if we gave you money here, how do we enter this campus to come and supervise our project? Because these roads are terrible. I said, the, the, if you want to help us with the road, we are willing to, uh, to accept the assistance. So I said, okay, go and put something there in your project for that road to be reconstructed. You know, I went to the vice chancellor there, for Salako, and then he said, oh, just put some millions there for us. And for even the internal road within here, because we are going from here to Ifsera, it's a big problem. And from here to Mabuko, the other extremes, about 13 kilometers away, the boundary of this university. And then he said, you can put some money there. We will fund it for you. I did. They now said, we are taking that money through the Ministry of Agriculture. Till today, we didn't see a dime of that money. Till today. And the Ministry of Agriculture has been collecting our money, sponsoring NAPRI, because it's livestock project for this university. They approved the sheep, goats, and poultry for us and, for, and the road as well. Because I was in Abuja to defend that project. And I was guaranteed that, don't worry, we are going to give you this. But it has to pass through the Ministry of Agriculture. And that was how we lost everything. And the road has been there since. We complained about it just now. Those people also complained about it. <laughs> it's unfortunate for us. Thank you so much. Professor Badimu, Director of Biotechnology. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Adewale Obadino. I'm a professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology. Uh, I want to ask a question and why that is happening. But before I say that, permit me to say that I have an existing and ongoing project with some colleagues at Federal Research Institute for Animal Health, FLI, at Grivard uh, in Germany. And presently, I have one of my PhD students uh, over there. Uh, we have an ongoing project sponsored by DFG. And in that project, the colleagues, five of them from FLI, supposed to visit FUNAP, and these are in the project. But since last year, uh, the story has been that the government of Germany says Ogun State Abekuta is not safe and they have not been able to call. And this project is going to end by May. So I want to ask, do you believe this place is not safe <laughs> and why this is happening? Thank you. Yeah, I, I fully understand your question because it's an ongoing issue for us and also for me personally. The problem is, you know, we have security agencies with the German government. They are sitting somewhere in Berlin or wherever and they get the, the bad news from some areas of Nigeria and then they tell us all of Nigeria is not safe, you know. And then that's the problem. Then I have to go back to them both. I mean, uh, we have a lady ambassador in Abuja, and she and uh, me, myself, we are on the same track, you know. Then we are arguing, look, we can always explain to you where it might not be safe, but there are so many safe areas, so please don't prevent people from moving, uh, I mean, coming, visiting, whatever, Lagos or Abiy Okuta or Benin City or, you know, many, many places in, in Nigeria. So, um, and, and I also, you know, of course, they, we have the federal police, they, they all, are always scared that some of our high-ranking politicians might have a problem when they travel, you know. And, but we, we told them then, look, it's okay, they shouldn't go to certain places, but the rest is fine. And so, so the best, I think, for, for this case is that you, uh, I give you my email address, you write me this case, and I come back to, to I get back to our agencies. Yeah. Because uh, I just, you know, just to, to make you aware of this, even within Lagos, you know, 
we have to argue with our security agency where I can move or not. <laughs> and, and some are worse, you know, the, the, my poor Danish colleague cannot, <laughs> cannot leave the islands almost. But, but uh, I, for example, I just told them, you know, for example, the, the right to within, you know, within, uh, let's say, mainland parts, you know, like Ikeja, Yaba, or so. You know, I just told them, okay, I prefer to have not an armored vehicle, you know, because in an armored vehicle you cannot even open the window and talk to somebody. <laughs> You're, you are jailed yourself. <laughs> and I don't like to travel in a jail. So, so now they allowed me, and whether it's us or somebody else from the consulate, that we take a normal car, you know, to Yaba and, and Ikeja. But that makes you maybe understand how they are always cautious, you know, and, and fear everything. And we have to explain, no, this is, this is possible, and the risks are somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. It's having those land days to get. That's why for crisis, you Having those land there, promote it. <laughs> Sorry, I said I did my PhD in Germany about 30 years ago. So that was what I just uh, said. So when he saw the mouth moving during the anthem, maybe that was why I could sing the national anthem a little bit. <laughs> so my question is this now, seed technology. I was just having a small discussion with my colleague seated here. I'm a biochemist, but of late, I have moved my interest from biochemistry to seed. And seed in the sense that we are importing a lot of oils, sunflower, and all those things like that. But I believe that the machinery is there that we can use to process all these seeds into various soils. So how will Germany help us in that particular situation, because Funan has a lot of land where we can produce these seeds that can be processed into various oils. That's my question. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a, a good answer directly, but I will take it with me. And I, I'm sure that, that uh, our chamber expert, for example, will find something out on this. So it's, it's um, nutritious oils from seeds, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Good morning, sir. Um, I am Adine Konali Amin. I'm a master's student, Department of Environmental Management and Toxicology. My question is also a plea. Um, last I checked, Germany is um, the largest economy in Europe, um, the number one exporter of um, machineries and mechanized tools in Europe and even in the world ahead of Netherlands and France. Germany also has 98% of their agriculture as commercial and mechanized agriculture. And Nigeria, we only have 15% of our agriculture as being commercial and just basically below it as being mechanized. So my own question and plea is, what can um, the bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Germany do to bridge this wide gap between the percentage that we're having here and the fact that there are some crops that are indigenous to tropical areas like Nigeria and West Africa, how can we also partner on this axis, most importantly, cocoa production where Nigeria is actually um, the second largest producer of um, the cocoa um, farm produce in Nigeria. I want to know how we can you know, do better with that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. I think um, there, there are some good examples already of, of this cooperation. Like I mentioned, you know, the cassava um, testing of, of machinery, German machinery, but with cassava floor from Nigeria to, to make new products. And uh, my wife is always emphasizing that cassava is even becoming more popular in um, Central Europe, in Germany, because more and more 
aged people in Europe develop allergies against wheat, you know, gluten allergies, and cassava is the solution. Yeah, so it's not, not just a solution for Nigerian people, but also for German or European people. And this means that also uh, we have to cooperate more in the trading options, you know, how to get things on the market. Let me give you another example uh, that is cashew nuts. You know, there, there are some tropical countries like Nigeria growing a lot of cashew nuts. Uh, but for, for entering the European market, um, you kind of have to build up the, the industry to, to uh, treat the cashew nuts, right? Because, because the, the German consumer wants to have a treated product, you know? And, and meaning that like, like one of, you know, you may have heard Julius Berger, it's originally a German construction company that built a lot of bridges and roads in Nigeria after your independence. Now they are, the, the, the sister company that was in Nigeria is now an independent Nigerian company, Julius Berger Nigeria Limited, and they built the first, one of the first modern cashew nut processing plants in Epe, in east of uh, Lagos State. Only recently, they o opened this factory last year, which shows um, Nigeria has to not just harvest cashew nuts, but has to make products out of cashew nuts that you can both sell to your own people and export. And, and I'm sure Nigeria, with some of these products, has a good chance on the European market because Europeans have a, have a rather high percentage of products coming from the outside also, you know. And often it's, let's say, from Vietnam, for example, you know, cashew nuts from Vietnam, but why shouldn't they come from Nigeria? I hope that's at least some answer to your question. Adeni Yolani, I use my name, a professor of agricultural mechanization and a resource person to open up on sustainable development goals. Let me first of all appreciate the vice chancellor and the leadership of this university for bringing the Consul General, German Consul General, our way. That was a lovely presentation. Permit me also to start on a lighter mood. Since you started on a lighter mood, why it is true that uh, it is difficult to attain first position? You also agree with me that it is much more difficult to sustain or to retain that position. And that's why we, we appeal that uh, you grant us your support. Don't withdraw it. Because other universities are not sleeping. They are thinking of how to meet up with us. But we need something like a JAMA machine to propel us further, so that uh, they will just be looking at us afar there. Having said that, let me allay your fear or also assure you that in this university we have eggs in engineering, in the sciences, in the agri, in the environment, that if you bring grants or awards to this university, because I have extracted a two-page document from your presentation that shows the interest. And I was looking just like uh, I was discussing with my, my DVC, a former DVC here. All those machines you are mentioning, our colleagues here will also tell you that if we have opportunity to be involved in such a project, we are going to do as much, uh, if not much better. Because this is a university of agriculture that has faculty or colleges of engineering, sciences. You know, we study agriculture. We don't just apply engineering. We go into the basis of knowing what is called the engineering properties of plant and animal materials. In other words, if you study what you want to apply that knowledge to, it's much, much easier than somebody that is just applying the engineering knowledge alone. That is the beauty of faculty of engineering. So what am I trying to say, sir, is that uh, you, you try us, or you give us that opportunities, just like some of my colleagues have said, that we have a very good tie with you, and then uh, we will be able to retain our position as the best in Africa. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I enjoyed the lecture. I want to appreciate my vice chancellor for this great strike. And uh, um, my name is Alaba Ulufumla Yojola Oshio. I'm the director of Institute of Food Security. You can see why I'm important to come here. Food Security, Environmental Resources, and Agricultural Research is the whole institute here. And we are breeds of animals. We have crosses. We are already crossing the Kalari with our own different local types that is adapted to it. We have what we call Kalamaradi. We have what we call Kalawad, the African, West African dwarf, which is very great in milk. So I discovered that we've been talking about animals, but this, uh, we've been talking about crops. And not only that, when you talk about Ifsera, we have cocoa. The issue of cocoa is another era. We have eight programs under this institute. So it's, a very, it's, a, it's an area that we can collaborate extensively whatever aspect you are looking at in terms of agricultural uh, uh, food security and even environment. We talk about even methane. By my profession and training, I'm a professor of pasture production and conservation. So we know about effects of the feed to animals on environment, which is the effect of greenhouse gases, methane. Those are some of the areas too we are looking at and we will be glad if you can collaborate with us as an institute, because, and as a university too, by extension, because we have a large area, we have large stock of animals too, and we have some cow, which is not like the white fulani. We have beef cow, which we would like to improve, and it's a meat cow, meat cow. it's a beef with a lot of meat. So the institute is a veritable area where you can even come into and work with us. So I want to encourage you because we have lots of beautiful breeds of animals and cross. And it's lecturers here that are doing the crossing, not from any other place. So you can see that we have lots of good breeds that you can work with. Thank you very much. Actually, I forgot the second message that Professor Wole Shoyinka told me to bring to you. He wants to know more about your goat breeding program. Yes. <laughs> he felt not, not enough if informed. Thank you very much, sir. I am first from Olurotimi Williams, a non-teaching staff who loves agriculture very seriously. I am very impressed with the lecture you gave, sir. And I want to say that based on what I've seen in FUNAP, uh, which triggers my interest, I've seen a lot of students going for practical classes with their holes and cutlasses, which uh, has always made me to ask questions that when are we going to move away from these traditional tools of hose and cutlasses. And at the same time, I personally, I am into agriculture, farming, and you just mentioned in your lecture that you have some small tools that can, you could even pull around and make work easy. And I feel that with this kind of collaboration between FUNAB, I'm specific now FUNAB with Germany, how can you help us and the students to move away from the traditional machiners, machineries that we are using to go into these smaller tools that we can easily afford? And also the engineering department taking advantage of even manufacturing them and maintenance too. Thank you very much. Maybe just one comment because uh, I think as I mentioned, this Agrofood Nigeria trade fair, also C. Wehrmann, this uh, trading company for small agricultural machinery, will be present there. And I think it's, it's so important because, you know, the, the backbone of the German economy in, in such specialized machinery is not the big, big brands, but SMEs in Germany. 
And they, because they want to survive not just five years or ten years, but they want to have a gener for generations, want to exist themselves, they don't just sell the machinery. They are interested in having people also in Nigeria to know how to handle them. So they offer also the training, etc. Because otherwise, you're not happy with the machines, the farmers are not happy with the machines, and then they can't sell the next generation or develop the next generation. So I can, can only emphasize, please uh, use this chance, because it's very close in, in, in 12 days, to get into contact with those German companies already on the market in Nigeria for all these small machinery issues also. Can we give the His Excellency a resounding round of applause, please? He has done justice to our questions. And at this juncture, may I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lushola Babatude Kendi, to anchor the next start of pre presenting the university's gestures to His Excellency, Mr. White Bonner. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, His Excellency, the Consul General of Germany. We want to specially thank you once again for the beautiful lecture you gave and the responses that follow the questions and the clarifications. We're happy that you are here, and I would like to say that as a university, we have one or two gifts for you. So I would like to invite you to please come while I do the presentation downstairs there. Thank you. Madam, Dr. Bonner, please join His Excellency. We have this gift on wheels. Yes, we have some gifts on wheels. And let me just wheel them to you right now here. So. You want me to open a farm? <laughs> yes, you won't mind you opening a farm? Okay, let's move back. Okay. Okay, while we are in the practice of agriculture, we produce some things in this university, and we're happy to present to you some of our products that emanated from our farms and from our processing units. So, I don't know, I will be taking them out one by one, as much as time will permit. We have this, first of all, it's a bread, bromate-free, very good. Very delicious. Please put it here. And then we have this smoked fish. I know that Dr. Bonner will know how to prepare you dishes with this. And then, you know, we mentioned it earlier. We have this fufu, cassava flour. Yes, fufu. Yeah, that's the real fufu, yeah. So we have it in there too. And then, you may not be able to visit the place. We have a zoo park on the way to the campus. You will have seen it. This is just to tell you that there's a zoo park. And um, we have also some eggs. So we have eggs there. And then, of course, we have this. We will advise that you take, you, you take it when you get back home. It's our pan wine. You may not take it on the road. <laughs> So we have some other things down, the water we have there, and the honey that we also made on campus. So on behalf of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, we want to present this to you. And to cap it all, we won't want to let them out of this cage. So we have these chickens too. Like we said, they were bred on the farm here. Yes, from our poultry breeding program. We have this chicken for you. Thank you so very much for coming. They are here. They will carry them downstairs for you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Vice Chancellor. I think now we can live in Lagos for at least a whole week or even longer without going to any supermarket. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. So we can go back to our seat. Thank you. Yeah. I must say I'm also very impressed and I mean 
we had have animals before, but always for being our friends. Now, what do I do with this chicken? <laughs> Don't worry. You kill them, you eat them. Special one. Mm. Okay, you also want to. Just so we we had some official gifts that we already presented to the vice chancellor in his office, but there is a little brochure on Germany. If you are interested, there are many copies here on the desk. Please feel free to take one when you are leaving. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you also very much for the gifts. Uh, people will take them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will sustain the applause until His Excellency gets back to his seat. Thank you. On this note, we have um, to respectfully invite once again the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lushola Babatunde Kende, to give the closing remarks. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I know you'll agree with me that this has been a worthwhile experience. It has been a time well spent. Um, as closing remarks, I want to say this. So we're happy that you are here. It has been an eye-opening session, like you heard from our people. One main thing that we're interested in as a university is in the issue of machineries, farm machineries, processing machineries. And without you coming here, we wouldn't know about some of the efforts that are currently on ground in these areas, especially the agro-food trade fair that is coming up between March 26 and March 28. I want to assure you, we will be there. We will be there to interact with these companies, and not just to interact, we'll be there to make purchases for this university. We will be there to do that. And of course, this has also opened a vista of relationship between Germany and Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta. Look at the issue that Professor Obadino raised. Definitely, we now have an inroad into the German embassy. And I dare say that once anybody flashes the Funabai D card straight into the German embassy. <laughs> so we will come. We will build on this relationship with one aim, to get information hmm, and to get assistance that can link us up to companies that we're not aware of of what they are doing before. And we know that with this collaboration, more doors, more opportunities will open up for us. And so we want to thank you for coming. Thank you for the information. Dear colleagues, what I think we will do is to have also a desk in UNAB, in FUNAB. Um, Access Bank, that is a desk in Access Bank. We will have a desk in FUNAB for the German Embassy. And once this desk is there, please, if you have any issue, as far as Germany is concerned, rest assured, we have an inroad into Germany. And so, while we thank you, we want to say that um, His Excellency will still go around, visit a few more places before leaving. And if we come to your side, please feel free to build on this relationship more than we have done now. More questions, more interactions will take place when we visit some of the areas on campus where we need to see more practical things about this university. So, once again, his Excellency, we thank you. Madam Dr. Bonner, we thank you very much. Distinguished colleagues, we want to thank you for sparing the time. Thank you for coming. And um, we hope that many, many more of this will still follow. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you. At this juncture, I'd like to call on um, the acting registrar, Mrs. Oluwatoni Morofat Daudu, to please give the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good afternoon, the Vice Chancellor, Your Excellency, the German Consul, Mr. Twer Brett Berner, and his amiable wife, Dr. Berner. On behalf of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, 
I want to sincerely appreciate the German consul for his visit to, uh, to the great institution and the enriching lecture which he delivered. I am hopeful that this will be a start of good things to come to Federal University of Agriculture and uh, between the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, and the German um, government. On this note too, I would like to appreciate the facilitator of this event and his team for putting this, thing, this together for every one of us to benefit from. And lastly, I want to appreciate all the participants seated this afternoon, because without the participants, there will be no, 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 uh, no event. I want to appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming and, the, and um, getting engaged with the German consul during the interaction session. And to our students, the primary, the secondary, and the undergraduates, we say a very big thank you to all of you for sparing your time. Thank you all, and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Ma, for that wonderful vote of thanks. At this juncture, the Vice Chancellor, sir, Your Excellency, may we all rise for the hunting. Funabantem, German, followed by the National Prayer, which is the second stanza of our national anthem. Thank you very much.
constant uh, of our national anthem, which is the national prayer. Thank you very much. Please let's wait for the um, eye table to exit the hall for us before we follow suit. There will be a group photograph downstairs. We thank um, the Excellency, His Excellency Mr. Ward Barna, the German Consul General to Nigeria, and his amiable wife, Dr. Imke Barna, who has uh, visited uh, the Federal University of Agriculture. I would like to thank all the deans and directors here present. All the members of um, the heads of departments, the heads of unit, the FUNIS um, students, primary school students, uh, pupils, and all other staff, non teaching, head of units of uh, non teaching staff, and uh, everyone here present. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Please let's um, proceed downstairs to have um, the group photograph. Thank you. <laughs> 